This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, everyone. I'm Vicki Coleman. I've been a member here for about 14 years and lay leader for the past four years. When I first saw the sign-up sheets for Laity Sunday and heard that small voice saying, Vicki, you have to sign up. I started debating what would I say. I had two ideas, to talk about favorite Bible verses or how I came to be a Christian. After much debate, every night while I was trying to fall asleep, I decided to combine the two. After all, I think one needs to be a Christian to have favorite Bible verses. I don't have a dramatic story to tell about how I became a believer. I was blessed to be born into a Christian family. I was baptized as an infant at Frankfurt Methodist Church in Philadelphia. After a number of moves, my family settled in the Bustleton section of Philadelphia where we attended Bustleton Methodist Church. In the kindergarten and first grade Sunday school classes, each week we were given a little card with a Bible verse on it to memorize. And after we had completed and memorized 10 verses, then we would receive a little book. How I treasured those little books in competition with some of my classmates, who were also my classmates in the public school. Later, we would learn and memorize whole chapters from the Bible. The first chapter that I learned and memorized was the 23rd Psalm, which is still my favorite. Depending on which resource you use, it's either number three number eight, or number 25 in the top 100 favorites. What a blessing to know that the Lord is always there, my leader, my guide, in times of trouble to protect, comfort, and support me, to bless me abundantly, my cup runneth over, and that I will dwell with him forever. Later, as a teenager, I was asked to participate in a lay witness mission. I told the coach that I really didn't know what I would say, again, because I don't have any dramatic story to tell. She likened my Christian development to a window shade, you know, the kind that's on a roller with a spring. You can snap it really hard and it flies all the way up to the top, sometimes rolling around many times. Or you can pull it gently and raise it slowly, inch by inch. And that's how my Christian life and faith have been, slow and steady. Through prayer and study, my faith has increased. And when I've been called on to speak, the Lord has put the words in my mouth, in my profession, to pray with parents who have just lost a baby, or the friends and family who are fearing surgery, or those near death. Going back to my favorite Bible verses, Over the years, I've memorized many verses and chapters. In Sunday school, we were challenged to memorize the Ten Commandments, the Beatitudes, Psalm 100, and many other verses. One year in Vacation Bible School, we made plaques and painted them. I don't know what happened to mine, but when we cleared out my mother's house, my brother gave me his. And it's... um, where the Lord is teaching on the great commandment, thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And the second is like unto it, thou shalt love your neighbor as thyself. Matthew 22, verse 39. I keep it in my living room. More recently, I was challenged to memorize a verse for each letter of the alphabet. Do you know that there are even verses that start with Q, X, and Z? (laughs) Quicken me according to thy word, from Psalm 119. Xerxes commanded Queen Vashti to come before him, Esther, chapter 11, verse 17. And Zion will be delivered with justice, her penitent one, with righteousness, Isaiah 1, 27. The J verse is the shortest. 
In John 11:35, Jesus wept. That was always a fun one in Sunday school when we would have um, what they called Bible hunt. Most of my favorites are from the Psalms. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Psalm 100, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Psalm 19, the heavens declare the glory of God. I think of this every time I watch the sunset at Cape May Point. My S verse is also a favorite song. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Matthew 6, verse 33. I think about favorite songs, too, and maybe that will be my next challenge, to go through the alphabet and consider favorite songs. The song that we'll be singing shortly, O Master, Let Me Walk With Me. I love the fourth verse. In hope that sends a shining ray, far down the future's broadening way, in peace that only thou canst give, with thee, O Master, let me live. I'll close with my I verse from Philippians 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. My oldest grandson also chose this as his favorite. He even has it tattooed on his body. Throughout life, there are many things we don't want to do or think we can't do. But knowing the Lord gives me the peace to carry on and do those things. Thank you. I'm going to read the first eight verses from the fourth chapter of Mark parable of the sower. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it out on the lake while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them many things by parables and in his teaching said, listen, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seeds, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow, but when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear grain. Still other seed fell on good soil. It came up, grew, and produced a crop, multiplying 30, 60, or even 100 times. If you have ever tried to garden, whether it be by sowing seeds or transplanting tender plants, you know that each vegetable or flower is a unique living thing. Each grows differently. Each requires care of its own liking. And each growing season can differ greatly from the previous one. Each season is a challenge. Some years we have rain in abundance. Others, such as this one, we are very dry and face challenging growing conditions. But gardeners are optimistic and usually quite persistent. We hope for the best each and every growing season. Referring to the scripture I just read, Jesus knew his audiences. When he spoke to gatherings, be they large or small, he tailored his message to fit the crowd. He knew that parables from the land would be well received by audiences who understood farming and guarding. This is one of them. As the parable illustrates, not everyone who hears the word of God receives it. Some of us forget what we hear almost immediately and I include myself in this category on occasions. Others may receive it with joy only to fall away or forget what it was all about when tough times arrive. Some may receive the word, but then let the attractions and wealth of the world crowd out the message from their lives. A few, however, receive God's word, take it to heart, and put it into practice in their daily lives. They produce good crops of righteousness and love. 
If you fall into this latter group, I have both respect and envy for you. I know that I'm not there yet. Perhaps many of you feel similarly as you consider it now. If you, like me, fall into the often fall short category, consider these thoughts to help us do better. One, when you read the Bible or hear it read or listen to a sermon, don't close your heart to the message. Try to find an idea, a nugget or a seed, if you will, that resonates with you. Carry that seed with you that day and try to find a way to apply it to what you are doing. Two, watch out for the world's distractions that try to divert you from God's word. Think of the distractions as weeds or insects that invade your garden. Do what you can to eliminate the pests. And surely, a rabbit will eat the spinach or a squirrel that juicy tomato you had your eye on despite our best efforts. If possible, find a quiet moment to spend with God in prayer or think through his word. Three, realize that not all of God's messages to us will bring joy. Some other parts may bring us a measure of sorrow, especially when we realize that we often fall short of what may be expected of us. Not every seed we plant or seedling we transplant will grow into what we had hoped for. But do not give up trying to reach the lofty standard that has been set for us. Resilience is something to be treasured. Keep after the weeds, water regularly, and look forward to that big fresh tomato that brings that smile to your face upon that first bite. You know then that the effort was worth it. Number four, jot down a key thought or two and review them later when your mind is less cluttered. Reread the scripture lesson that precedes the sermon. That may trigger a spark that sticks in your mind. Or rewatch the sermon on the website or listen to it on our podcast. Five, most importantly, do not give up. Every gardener knows that there will be weeds or insects or critters that invade the garden. With persistent effort, they can be overcome. The same can be said for faith. We may not get the message or understand it thoroughly the first time we hear it, but working on it, thinking about it, putting it into practice can help us better grasp it. Sometimes we have to reseed to get the plants we want to grow in our garden. Results in the garden require effort. The same can be said for faith. Invest time and effort and the rewards can be great. What kind, of, what kind of soil am I? What kind of soil are you? How receptive are you to the seeds that God seeks to plant in you? With some work, we can all be fruitful gardens for God. For that, we can be thankful. Thanks be to God. I was raised in East Falls, and I attended Falls United Methodist Church for a very long time. Um, I had wonderful Sunday school teachers who taught me about the love of God and the love of Jesus Christ and the very, the, they were the very, very, very best for us. My mother was my Sunday school teacher in, in the beginner's class, but I had wonderful Sunday school teachers as you have here that teach you the word of God, that he is compassionate has grace and mercy for all of us. Um, we went to the Holy Land in 2016. The Hovises and I roomed with J uh, Carol Slagle. But we were ded rededicated in the Jordan Ritter River, which was absolutely clear. And we had a white robe, but your bathing suit was underneath. And we got into the water, and each bus had a chaplain on it. So it was, when you got in the water, there was a chaplain. But he didn't dunk you until he asked you the question, what do you believe in? And I said, he is my rock and my salvation. And I got dunked. But we were all rededicated. But there are two women on our bus that were not, um, they, they, uh, 
were not baptized, so they were baptized in the Jordan River. But it was wonderful to be able to walk where Jesus walked. And we came out of the upper room, and there were a lot of us, and we all joined hands, and we sang the doxology. Uh, but that was a wonderful experience to be able to walk where Jesus walked. But back to Sunday school. My grandfather drove my sister and my twin brother and I to Sunday school every Sunday morning and then went back for my mother and my grandmother for the service at 11 o'clock. But we had, <laughs> the first Sunday of every month, we had Quiz Sunday, meaning that you had to remember what you learned for the first three weeks in Sunday school. And in the beginning, I thought, oh, wow, this is daunting. But you know what? You remember. You remember scripture. You remember uh, that God loves you. And, and um, my favorite Bible verse is Jeremiah 29, that he gives you a hope and a future. And that's wonderful. But when we came out of the Jordan River, you had your bathing suit under the white robe. So you got dressed. But there were two women from another bus room that were very large women. And they said, can you help us get this off? Because it's ringing wet, because you've been in the Jordan. So I helped them get, <laughs> get it off. She said, I, think, I thought we were going to wear these home. But I helped them get it off. But you know, God has helped has asked us to help other people. And in Lehman Church, uh, I came here because my pastor at Falls Methodist, uh, at Tucker, said to me, you need to go to the church in the area where you live. So I came to Lehman the first Sunday, and our organist was Ara Aloyan. And he came to me and he said, choir, 8 o'clock, Thursday, be there. So I did. <laughs> I wasn't even a member yet. Um, I guess it was two weeks later that Menno Good uh, had a new members class, and I joined then. And that was 49 years ago. Next year I will be here 50 years, and I cannot believe that that's happening. But you know what? When you're here every Sunday, time just flies. And uh, we are so blessed to have Pastor Nancy and Pastor Julia that bring the word of Christ to us each and every Sunday. So I am so happy to be here and be able to tell you that Christ loves all of us and what's the very, very best for us. And that's what I learned in Sunday school. Thank you. <laughs>